early February 2010, astronauts of the European Space Agency landed at the Russian Language and Culture Institute of St. Petersburg State University. The purpose of the visit was to teach astronauts Russian language. Good command of Russian is essential in their future vocational training at the Astronaut Training Center in Zvezny Gorodok, which is scheduled for September 2010, as well as for work on the International Space Station in an international space crew. The interest of the European Space Agency for Russian language is not accidental. In the next few years, the space shuttle flights to the International Space Station will be turned down. Therefore, Russian Soyuz spacecraft will be the only transport of delivering crews to the station. As a director of the Russian Language and Culture Institute, I must say I am very pleased that astronauts, foreigners, study my native language, Russian language. More to say, I am pleased that they study Russian nowadays. Recently I read that in Australia, when they ask kids at school who is the first man in space, the school students reply, Armstrong. Of course, Neil Armstrong is an outstanding personality in the history of space research. But as to Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin, my feelings are hurt. And the fact that future spacemen came to Russia with the aim to learn Russian is the best contribution to preserve the memory of Yuri Gagarin's first flight to space. For one month, five astronauts who passed a competitive selection of European States Agency studied Russian language at Russian Language and Culture Institute of St. Petersburg State University. The institute provided astronauts with all necessary facilities, interactive multimedia boards with Russian language video applications, specialized training materials with a strong professional focus. The astronauts had a constant language practice not only in the classrooms, but also in Russian host families, where they lived during the training as well as during sports activities and sightseeing. Okay, so we've been here for almost three weeks now and everything is going to be, I mean, really up to the standards. Um, the classes are really good. We have a lot of interaction with the teachers. Uh, we spend a lot of time discussing with the students and, uh, and we've been uh, completely immersed in, uh, in the Russian culture, whether it be at home with our families, with our host families, uh, or in the city like visiting the different museums and uh, going to the opera. So, so far it's been a really great experience here for us in St. Petersburg. Thomas Pesquet, France, 32 years old, enjoys jogging, swimming, squash and outdoor sports such as mountain biking, kite surfing, sailing, skiing and snowboarding. Holds a black belt in judo. A pilot of a transport aircraft, he has logged more than 2,000 hours flying time on various commercial airliners. I like Russia, I like St. Petersburg, it's, uh, it's an incredible city, there's a lot of culture, there's a lot of museum to visit, there's a lot of life, so it's, uh, it's an extremely interesting city to be in. The institute here is, um, is providing us with very good education, the classes are very interesting, the teachers are extremely professionals, and I think, I think I'm, I'm taking all advantage, as much advantage as I can from, from being here and having the, the, the possibility to study Russian here in Russia. Luca Parmitano, Italy, 34 years old. Parmitano is an active scuba diver and enjoys snowboarding, skydiving, weight training and swimming. Awarded a silver medal to the aeronautical whaler by the President of the Italian Republic in 2007. Captain in the Italian Air Force, he has logged more than 2,000 hours flying time, is qualified on more than 20 types of military airplanes and helicopters. <laughs> 